the Lord, be strong, be stout-hearted, and wait for the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, perseverance in obeying your will. That in our days the people dedicated to your service may grow in both merit and in number. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hor, the children of Israel set out on the Red Sea Road to bypass the land of Edom. But with their patience worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in this desert? Where is there no food or water? We're disgusted with this wretched food. In punishment, the Lord sent among the people seraph serpents, which bit the people so many times, many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned in complaining against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord to take the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a seraph and mount it on a pole, and whoever looks at it after being bitten will live. Moses, accordingly, made a bronze serpent and mounted it on a pole. And whenever anyone who had been bitten by a serpent looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm. O oh Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. O oh Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come to you. Hide not your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me in the day when I call. Answer me speedily. O oh Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. The nations shall revere your name, O oh Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has rebuilt Zion, when appeared in his glory, and he has regarded the prayer of the destitute and not despised their prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. Let this be written for the generation to come and let this future creatures praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his holy height. From heaven he beheld the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoners, to release those doomed to die. O oh Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. Praise to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The seed is the word of God, Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. Praise, Praise to you, you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am going away and you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, he is not going to kill himself, is he? Because he said, where I am going, you cannot come. He said to them, you belong to what is below. I belong to what is above. You belong to the world. But I do not belong to this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, who are you? Jesus said to them, what I told you from the beginning. I have much to say about you in condemnation, but the one who sent me is true. And what I heard from him, I tell the world. They did not realize that he was speaking to them of the Father. So Jesus said to them, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am. And that I do nothing on my own, but I say only what the Father taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone because I always do what is pleasing to him. Because he spoke this way, many came to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> There's a lot to be said about this gospel, and I've read it before. I'm sure that you've read it before. And perhaps like me, something that you read in the gospel this time, or most recently, made you see things a little differently. I know that certainly it changed my perception a little bit. Not so much my overall understanding, but what Christ says in perhaps a little different way. In other Gospels, as you were aware, he speaks of the necessity of being childlike and that becomes I think an important part of this gospel he talks about a number of different things in the beginning he's talking about when he says I'm going away of course the Pharisees they don't understand he's talking about his crucifixion his prop he is prophesizing his death on the cross not only that he's telling them if you read closely sure all of you have. He's telling them of his father's part, God's part in his mission, in this crucifixion, crucifixion that will occur. Pretty powerful stuff. But there's much more being said here. There's something revealed about the Trinity. And part of it has to do with what I said about needing to become childlike. I read something, something that uh, a Dominican priest and theologian, Father Bonaventure said, and uh, let me read this to be sure I got it just right. The relationship of the Father and the and the Son and the depths of the Trinity is beyond our unaided understanding, to say the least. And further, he says, this is why the mystery of the blessed Trinity was not revealed unto the incarnation of the Word, the only begotten Son. In other words, we are aware that the term blessed Trinity Trinity is never 
really used in the Bible. It's not in the language. And beyond that, you know, we are taught this in the church, but it's, man, it's really, this, this concept of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit being three separate and being one, it's, it's really hard for us to digest and understand completely. It's not something of this world. It's not something that science can explain. It has a lot to do with faith, for sure. And in human terms, <coughs> what Father Bonaventure said about Christ, when he was talking about the Word incarnate, helps us understand a little bit. The relationship is between God and His Son, Christ, but it's a relationship between fathers and sons, which we do and can understand. That's important. That relationship is about love. It's about the son's total faith in his father. Willingness to accept. And Christ, just like we, had that freedom of choice. Something that I mentioned before Matt started. True, isn't it? He was a man. He could have chosen things to be other than they turned out. But at the top of this homily, I mentioned Christ prophesizing what was going to happen. It was his father's plan, and he was going to sacrifice himself as his father had planned for him to do. The supreme act of love, not only of Christ, but from the father who sacrifices his son, lets his son become the lamb. Powerful and meaningful to all of us. The choice, and this, this type of choice was made in many areas of the gospel. I don't know about you, but it made me think of Mary saying, yes, she had freedom of choice. There were so many instances. And do you know what? the option still exists for us every day. And so many little things that may occur, so many little things that may happen in our lives, we have the choice to do what is right, what God wants us to do, what reflects love. It's the thing that motivates God, no doubt. One last thing I had read by Bishop Robert Barron. He, he pointed out that Christ's crucifixion was the opening up of the divine heart so that we could see that no sin of ours could finally separate us from the love of God. Even if we make mistakes over and over, our salvation is still possible because of that sacrifice made by our God, by His Son Christ, 2,000 years later.
taking the advice of our beloved Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta really makes so much sense as she advised us to let nothing come between us and Christ. Let nothing come between you and his love. Peace be with you. Coming together as one family in faith, let us offer to God our prayers and our needs. <clears throat> For the whole Christian people, that in this sacred time they may be more abundantly nourished by every word that comes from the mouth of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the whole world, that in lasting tranquility and peace, our days may truly become that acceptable time of grace and salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For sinners and the neglectful, that in this time of reconciliation, they may return to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For ourselves, that God may at last stir up in our hearts a version for our sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For all those in our community, both here present and those watching on video, who are suffering, whether from physical, mental, or emotional illnesses that they may be comforted by the resurrected Christ let us pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. and for John Dean for whom this mass is being offered let us pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. and for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts for all of our intentions spoken and unspoken Join through the intercession of St. Thomas the Apostle. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude with a prayer of praise and honor of the Blessed Trinity. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Bless you, God Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all the children of the church. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of consolation, that being moved to compassion, you may both pardon our offenses and direct our wavering hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed, holy our Lord, the bond of all, and it's made holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by putting down the spirit of bond and life to do false, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink, eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the child. So once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that for taking God, the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. There and with him in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. After Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious the grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. To await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of your Lord, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. <laughs> Amen. 
Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that ever seeking what is divine, we may always be worthy to approach these heavenly gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Prayer to St. Michael. Holy Light of the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke you when we humbly pray. And may you be our Prince of the Heavenly Host. Out of divine powers, thrust into hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The divine praises. Blessed is he, God. Joseph, the most chaste spouse, blessed be God and his angels and his saints.